Hello, everyone. My name is Tim B. Green, and this is Crush It Club episode 70, Scaling Up Excellence Book Review. Now, this is at least the third time I've listened to this book, but it's been maybe five years. And this is the only book I can honestly say that after having, having not read it for five years or listened to it for five years is it's probably the single best business book I've ever listened to, especially since over the five years where I've read probably around 250, 300 books since then, it's still top notch. It's still up to date, save one exception and that it is not seven plus or minus two on short term memory. It's four plus or minus one, but that research wasn't commonly known by pretty much anybody by myself included uh, at the time when um, scaling them up excellence came out. Other than that, everything is rock solid and the references are excellent and relevant today and rather ahead of their time to say the least. So I would love to start actually by asking because I love books so much and I hope you do too. Please put in the comments the best book on business in general or business development you've ever read or books on that topic in the comments. That means do me a favor. Let's see. Yeah, so we've got that third time. Got that. Got that. I'm covering it pretty fast now because I tried once before and I couldn't get it done. So... What's interesting is that almost everything that I that I talk about in my consultancy, but also in business meetings, in other books that I've read, other expert consultants that I've talked to or watched online, they're not talking about anything new that um, Robert I. Sutton and Huggy Rao didn't already talk about in this book, and usually at, at a better level than what you're hearing today. So it is top notch. So what I really want to do, though, is do a quick flyover, because that's all there's really time for in 10 minutes, of my favorite points of this book, the ones that stood out without having to really go back and, and track them down, because there's so many. The no asshole rule. I love this. Not only because it's true, but literally what they're saying in essence is that assholes are the biggest problems in businesses. That's what causes them to fail in scaling and fail probably in general or be much less than they could be. And if you don't reform yourself as the local asshole, you are removed regardless of your rank. That's great. That's the kind of stuff it takes probably to take most businesses to the next level because it rolls downhill, right? Oftentimes, you can look at the lowest ranking people in a company and get a real sense of what the boss's attitude towards his reports are like from that lowest rank, because everything that starts at the top comes downhill, good or bad. So if you have a, an asshole CEO, you're pretty much going to have an asshole company all the way through. So the other one that I really liked, and he talked about this, or they talked about this, it was actually, they referenced it through Daniel Kahneman, though it's not Daniel Kahneman's work, and that is the pre-mortem, that is uh, a mindset or a frame in which you talk about something that you haven't yet done, but you talk about it in perfect tense, that is, uh, if everything went perfect, and our change effort, our scaling effort in five years was spectacular. In five years' time, what would have we done? And what would have we not done to get such excellent results? But also, and this is an important component of it, if five years from now, this was an unmitigated disaster, everything went wrong, it utterly failed. It cost millions or perhaps even over a billion dollars. What, what did we do or what had we done and what had we not done to reach this disaster? And then doing that, of course, at the beginning of things and what it is, is it gives you, let's call it, I like to call it emotional distance. 
I don't mean as in cold, I mean as in unemotional. This isn't your baby yet. You're not invested. So you're more likely to uh, find both strengths, weaknesses, and other things you may not have thought of if you don't take this perspective. So it's not so personal and invested because it hasn't happened yet. And that extra distance you put because of the language you're using really helps um, make better, more objective decision making on the front end. The other thing I really loved, extreme accountability. If you are lazy, you are useless, and you are getting by, you will be exposed in the frames they talk about. So like, okay, what did you do today, Tim, in front of everybody? And if, you haven't, if I haven't done anything, well, now everybody knows that I'm the useless one holding people back. Or conversely, what did you do today, Tim? I did this, 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 and this, and everybody goes, or the, the boss goes, that's excellent, Tim. Okay, everybody, this is the way it should be. So that extreme accountability, and it's not just accountability between the boss and the employees, your supervisor and your reports, but everyone. So everybody, even the people at the, the bottom, are accountable to each other and up and down. So if you see the boss doing something shitty in an ideal situation, you can bring their attention to it. Sort of like, boss, would it be okay if I did that? And if it wouldn't be, he should probably be apologizing to you and leading by example. So I love the extreme accountability. Now, throughout the book, they make, ex they make continuous reference to mindset long before most people talked about mindset. So this book was, uh, the copyright date, I believe, was 2014. And they're still talking about kick-ass mindset that today would still probably be considered cutting edge because most people are behind where this book was eight years ago. I love this one too. This is another mindset, but this one is almost, this is almost heartwarming. And that is the company belongs to me and I belong to the company. And again, this is all people at all level. So imagine the company as if it were your family. They talked about some, uh, some of the cluster fug airline disasters where a kid basically got lost and nobody would help them, who was actually paid to make sure that they were taken care of when they went on a flight unaccompanied. So it took somebody saying, imagine if this was your child, you're a mother, right? It's like, yes, that's what it took. So instead of having to do that on the back end to solve a problem, to do it on the front end saying, this is like your family, your best friend, your company. And if it fails, it fails for all of us. And giving everybody that frame that everybody is accountable in all directions as though it were their baby. I love this one too. They talked about Disney, how in Disneyland, not only is everybody a cast member and their main job is to make sure everybody is happy, but everybody is a cast member. It's a generative analogy, as the Heath brothers like to call it. Whereas, like, we don't need a big manual with everything you need to do. It's like, you're a cast member. What would a cast member do in this situation? So, again, powerful generative mindsets. So, that means if there's garbage on the ground, it's everybody's job to pick it up. In fact, it's everybody's job to do everything as far as they possibly can. And not as far as they feel like, but as far as they possibly can. Another thing they do, which is brilliant, is they embrace complexity. That is, when something is complex, you got to deal with and acknowledge that complexity. Otherwise, cut cognitive load. Kiss it. Keep it simple, stupid. Next one is contradiction and continuum. And this is about the early in the book, they talk about Buddhism versus Catholicism as the framework for companies where Buddhism is adaptive. It's kind of like, well, we kind of know where we want to go, but we're going to adapt to each local condition. And Catholicism, where it's like just duplicate, clone everything, do everything the same way. And thinking of that on a continuum, and they make some excellent references to uh, Tamagoya, which is a Japanese company, a bento company, and Netflix. They also make and this is probably my favorite part, extensive, specific, concrete actions, like in a huge list of actual things you can do, actions you can take 
to scale your company, to make your company better, your HR better. Um, and probably the last one I'm going to leave you with, because I'm already out of time, is bad is stronger than good. This is loss aversion and other things. If you have assholes, troublemakers, negative people, they are about five times as powerful in their negative actions to take down your company and undermine your culture than the people doing the good things. So get them out. Okay, that's it. One more reminder, please put your favorite business book or business development book of all time into the chat if you could. Thank you very much. My name is Tim B. Green. This has been Crush It Club, episode 70, Scaling Up Excellence book review. Bye for now.